Uh, Avaya is who we work for, and we are quite happy with where we're going with networking technologies. We're not only a software company, a communications company, we're also a networking company. We see all those things nicely, tightly coupled together. All right? uh, we sell to finance, stock exchanges, healthcare. We actually ran the entire network for the 2014 Winter Olympics that just got completed. We were the vendor, single vendor, that ran the entire backbone. We ran that on a single protocol called Shores Path Bridging. All right. Now, within Avaya, we call it Fabric Connect. We've taken the standard. We have the functionality not only to do LAN extensions anywhere we want, so you can just provision one endpoint and provision another endpoint, and the network automatically connects together. We also have integrated routing, so we can replace the functionality of OSPF directly into it as well. We have integrated multicast routing, so we can do all the PIM functionality without the pains and suffering of rendezvous points and bootstrap routers. In fact, actually at the Olympics, in a private VRF running on SPB, we had 36 HD channels, channels streaming from every event to 1,500 set-top boxes across the entire Olympic Village. Right? So at every moment in HD, they could watch every event from every other event. This is all live streaming inside of a single VRF without the need and complexities of MPLS. No BGP, no LDP. We reuse all the multicast algorithms that exist inside of Shores Path Bridging, and we converge the network in less than 50 milliseconds. Right? We have many virtual networks running at the same time. Every single time an event clock you saw, like a, a, the luge would be counted as time, it immediately fed back from that clock, which was plugged into a network in a stealth network in the background on a VRF that was hidden, all the way back to VMs and multiple data centers. The data centers themselves were interconnected and virtualized so that they all ran at the same time. Even though they were physically separated, right? there were two one, main ones and we had four other ones for development and functionality. Every virtual machine in that environment thought they were connected to the same virtual switch router. Even, even though we split them up into multiple virtual uh, VRFs, that meant in each domain, each VRF, they were quite involved in, only in that VRF. So the VMs could actually bounce back and forth between individual physical data centers staying inside their virtual routing environment because we combine the LAN stretch with the virtualized routing together, right? And we can do this at incredible speed because we have one protocol instead of multiple fighting for CPU and memory and all that functionality. The protocol sees everything at once, so it can make calculations much faster than we could do in other environments. Right? So hopefully that impressed you, Aya. Well, well, now you're overselling it. But no, actually, <laughs> yeah. I'd love to show it to you. We actually take it down and No, I believe that it works, but you're overselling it. <laughs> Uh, will you go into the virtual router functionality? Virtual router. Okay, so we have complete VRF functionality yeah. built into our Fabric Connect technology, right? Mm -hmm. So just like you would do a VRF inside of MPLS, but you'd have to tie that to route distinguishers and uh, route targets and have that you know, BGP infrastructure sitting in the background on top of your MPLS infrastructure. For us, we in SBB alone, it's closer to make an analogy that SBB is a simpler MPLS, all right? We subsume the functionality of the label directly into the Ethernet header. Mm -hmm. We subsume the functionality of LDP directly into ISIs, right? So we're able to reuse a lot of the mechanisms that were already there and just take better control of them and get a faster converging environment. There's a thing in 802.1H called an ISID, which is an extension of a VLAN. So where VLANs were 4,096, now we have 16 million virtual networks we can build. Because that ISID is a VPN ID concept instead of a VLAN concept, though. Because a VLAN, you have to map port by port through switch to switch to the network. And I said, though, what we did in IEEE was okay, more of like a VPN approach. I could figure I want this VPN at this port and this VPN at that port, and the network automatically sees them and connects them together. You don't have to do port by port manipulation. Because it's a VPN, I can use that VPN ID, just like an MPLS, a label can identify a VPLS service as well as a VRF. The IC can identify a layer two service and a VRF. So I have 16 million IDs to create as many virtualized networks and combination of those that you want to do. Right? That's what we do with Fabric Connect. So with that, we start to go, what, that's just the protocol now. But the point is, is what do you do with the protocol? I gave one example, I kind of stole some of the thunder from Randy, about VM mobility and the flexibility of it. Um, so we talked about speed of convergence, the flexibility of stretching protocols out. There's also security built into it. The entire network looks like a single hop. Even while it's VMs... Breaking. No, because of the way we do the carrier grade functionality built into it from day one, we can provide to even a smallest enterprise the same carrier grade separation of client from network. The client doesn't see the network. 
even from the routing perspective, they can't even hack into any of the boxes in the middle of the network because they're invisible to them. Yeah, because you're transporting Mac and Mac over. Right, the, over because the internal Mac is secured behind the client Mac, right? In the IP realm, too, the internal Mac's hidden from the client IP, too. Of course. Right. You said something else there that uh, I've been reading through a book on SPV architecture, and the history here really is service provider. Absolutely. That now we're taking that technology and applying it to enterprise. Exactly. This is a natural progression of all technology. Think about it this way, from airbags. When airbags first came out, right, they were in the most expensive cars. I know guys right now have airbags in their freaking golf carts, right? So when OSPF first came out, it was called the carrier protocol, and all the enterprises were running RIP. So this shouldn't be a surprise, this evolution. Every single customer we've met this week, they're all service providers, even though they're enterprises. They're your hospital. They're your college. They're any kind of thing you would think of imagine from a network that's running out there, all networks essentially have become service providers. Now, the idea that they need the flexibility shouldn't be a surprise either. And we mentioned this back in the last interop too, 90% of deployments of SPV, enterprise. Because it's so fast, so simple, so easy to use, it's a no-brainer as soon as we have a conversation with the enterprise. So some of the things you're going to hear Alan talk about as well is how we're extending this into wireless. So we've made some product announcements this week as well, not only in the fact that we created a new product, but we're doing something completely different in a way of actually doing real unified access. Right? The problem with tunnels going away. Now, if I can go back from airbags and wireless to routing. <laughs> <laughs> I like analogies. I help people connect. All right. uh, so, okay, I understand how you use ICITS. Mm -hmm. And with ICITS, you start with building layer two virtual networks end to end. Uh, and then you introduce, you say you also have routing functionality. Well, ISIS is a routing protocol. Don't forget at the that. Edge. At, at the, the edge. edge, exactly. Thank you. Good. At the edge. Uh, so I have two subnets, and they should be part of the same VPN. So mm -hmm. where is the where is the router that routes between these two subnets? That's actually a really cool way we can answer that. And the demos we give is that the router concept on that it can be anywhere in the fabric. Right. But if you it wanted. Is a single point. No, it could be multiple points. So I can do VRP. Here's an example. You, because an ISA can be both layer two and layer three, I can have a layer two ISA for land stress between two data centers, mm -hmm. a layer three ISA at multiple VRFs acting as redundant points out of the network, doing VRP on the layer two ISA at the same time. So all the VMs themselves see the VRP address that they go to, and you, they go to the closest router out. So you do active, active VRP. Active, active VRP. And we How actually. Many VRP here? So we can do the standard mode too, and we can actually extend that even further beyond the VRP process, and we have our own internal ability to actually see things we call backup master, where we'll just go ahead and grab the pack in the closest router, route it out close so you don't have to go back to the primary, sure. yeah. right? So we have all that capability. And everything, by the way, I've talked about, it's not only at the Olympics, it's also in hospitals, stock exchanges, subway systems. So this isn't vaporware, so don't think it's, whatever, it's- Well, it's Olympics did go through, so <laughs> <laughs> it's not vaporware. No, it's fun. The Olympics were surprisingly simple. A lot of guys were bored. In fact, a lot of our guys you know, were from Canada and went to the hockey game because the network was running so well. All right, so I do want to hand this off to, we can get to the other things. Fabric attached first. Oh, Fabric Attach. That's true. That's one of the announcements uh, we made this week is something we call Fabric Attach. It's a, a way for end devices to ask to be a part of certain virtual networks. So as we're looking at SDN, and we took the Olympics as an SDN approach, by the way, Right. The fabric was the center of the network. We had an SDN-like controller that would basically see people at the end, devices, whether they're on wireless or that, and configure the box. Basically what I'm saying is that human beings didn't configure the VLAN per port and ISA per port on the edge boxes. It was a management system that did that based on the visibility of what was plugged in or who was attached, wire to wireless. So whether it was a cash register, a clock, or a human being, if you unplugged one port, plugged in another, the configuration moved with it. But human being didn't do it. Okay, so you That's, effectively you took something like a little one X. There you go. That's the first phase of it. Yes. Yeah, and uh, then you attach some policy engine to that. Policy is a big part. And of it. sorry to say, now you're you, you're uh, doing the right thing. Don't get me wrong. You're doing exactly the right thing. That's the old model. I haven't gotten to the new model yet. All right, so that's the old model. So this is where you start getting to that, and that'll continue to evolve as a controller perspective. But one thing we've gotten out of a lot of customers out there is the ability to move beyond .1x and have more intelligence about connecting devices to the fabric. So that's what the fabric attached functionality we've added is, is that the ability to actually embed a little bit of intelligence into any device out there that can, that pretty much that does ethernet. And it, when it plugs into the network, it can ask to join virtual networks. 
automatically. Mm -hmm. So we don't need to always have a managed system in the background watching us so that if it's a hospital, the MRI could ask to join a virtual network right, and be authenticated in the process. We look at wire SLAN, AP doesn't need to have massive configuration of background wires controllers. You plug the AP in and it asks to join certain SSIDs to certain virtual networks automatically in the background. All right? So that you don't have to worry about looking at AP as a separate logical network over a physical network. The AP becomes like an Ethernet SFP. It's an extension of the fabric directly out to the wireless interface. So that's where you'll hear Alan talk more about it. I don't want to steal too much of his thunder either. So.